What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to find inscribed angles and arc measures, all right? So this is the first example we're gonna go over. Uh, so as you can see, we have a circle over here with some white lines, they're just chords. And the two things we wanna find in this circle are the measure of angle T and the measure of arc QR, all right? So first, let's find the measure of angle T. So that angle is right here at T. Okay, now this is an inscribed angle. And the reason we know that is because the vertex of this angle, right, the point right here, is on the circle, okay? Same thing, just for clarity, uh, this angle over here, angle R, we can call it, is also an inscribed angle because the vertex of the angle is on the circle, okay? And the sides of the angles are also inside the circle. Okay, now, in order to find angle T, we need to look at the arc that it intercepts, all right? So from R to S. Now, this is called an intercepted arc. And the reason it's called that is because the sides of angle T intercept the circle at these points from R to S, right? So that's why this part of the circle that gets intercepted, we simply call it the intercepted arc. Okay, and there's a relationship between the inscribed angle and the intercepted arc. And that relationship is specifically that the angle is always half of whatever the arc is, all right? So if the arc is 48 degrees, then the angle is going to be exactly half of that, so 24 degrees, okay? So the measure of angle T, again, is simply 24 degrees, all right? Now let's find the measure of arc QR. And let's use a different color this time. All right, so arc QR would be this guy right up here. So how can we find the measure of this arc? Well, let's take a quick step back. Now let's remember, in an entire circle, there's 360 degrees. Now if you notice something, we have a special line in here that goes through the center of the circle. Now this line is a diameter, and we know it's a diameter because again, it goes through the center of the circle. Now the thing about diameters is it cuts circles exactly in half, right? We know that this arc is equal to this arc, okay? And we know that each of those two blue arcs are equal to 180 degrees. And again, we know that because to go around the whole circle, again, that's 360, and half of 360 is 180. Okay, so again, if we're looking for arc QR, maybe it'd be helpful to find this arc measure right here from Q to T. Okay, well, we can find that using this inscribed angle, right? Because this is 50 degrees and arcs are twice as big as the angles. So if this is 50, that means this arc is 100. Okay, so if this arc is 100, then this other arc from Q to R must be 80. <coughs> All right, here's our next example. So again, we're given another circle with a couple chords drawn inside and we're given a couple arc measures. This is 70 and this one from G to D is 120. And here we want to find the measure of angle G. So angle G is this guy right here. All right, so if we want to find this angle, it'd probably be helpful if we knew what this arc measure was, right? And we can certainly figure that out because remember, when you add up all the angles around a circle, they should be 360 degrees, right? But as you can see, we're already given part of the circle, right? We're given that this is 70 and this is 120. So that would mean that this arc right here from D to F would be 270 degrees, right? Because 70 plus 120 plus 270 is equal to 360. All right, so if we know that this arc is 270, again, the inscribed angle would just be exactly half of that. So the angle G over here would be 135 degrees. Boom. All right, here's our next example. So again, we have another circle and then we have some chords over here and hint, hint, looks like this one is a diameter, right? And then this other chord right here, and we're given that this angle is 160 degrees, all right? So for this circle, we want to find the measure of angle N. So N would be this arc, or sorry, this angle right here. So how can we find this angle? Well, again, it might be helpful to find the arc, the intercepted arc, right? So how can we find this intercepted arc? Well, let's see. Again, it looks like we're given a diameter, right? Because this straight line goes through the center of the circle. 
So that would mean that this is 180 degrees, and it would mean that this is 180 degrees. Okay, so if we know this yellow arc is 180, and we're given that part of this, right, this big part is 160, that means this little part over here in yellow must be 20 degrees, okay? And if the arc is 20 degrees, the angle is just half of that, so it would be 10. 10 degrees. Boom. All right, now for this next one, we want to find the measure of arc, Wx. So we have another circle over here. Again, we have a couple chords and our points W, X, Y. So we want to find arc, uh, let's do this in green, arc W, X, which is that arc right there, all right? So again, it might be helpful to find the other missing arcs, right? So first, maybe we could find this arc from W to Y, and we can do that using the inscribed angle, right? So the arc should just be twice as big as the inscribed angle. So if this is 75, that means this arc is 150 degrees, all right? So all the angles in a circle should be equal to 360, and so if we're given this big arc from W to Y and this one from Y to X, uh, 150 plus 110 is 260. So we could just do 360 minus the two that we're given, 260 is equal to 100. So we know that now this arc is equal to 100 degrees. <laughs> it looks like a face with a little tongue. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or want to see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.